Since 1996, survival horror fanatics have been enjoying the delightful cheese fest that is the Resident Evil franchise. From that opening live-action cinematic to the more advanced experiences of modern gaming, Capcom's long-running horror series has had many ups and downs. Laying out the best and the worst of Resident Evil can be a drawn-out, complicated process as there are more than 20 entries spanning 24 years. To make matters a little easier, we've broken down this ranking to just the main installments, including any remakes, despite how they may veer from the original canon. So, take a trip with me down memory lane as we revisit the halls of Spencer Mansion, slog through the sewers of Raccoon City, and travel to cities around the globe to rank the best Resident Evil games, and also the worst, ahead of the 8th game, Village. Before then though, if you hit the subscribe and smash the like buttons, we promise to treat you better than Bravo Team. 12. Resident Evil 6 We're sure some would put others in this spot, but the sixth title rings truer to us as the lowest point for the canonical Resident Evil games. Looking beyond the blatant shift to an action-packed experience, the story was as convoluted and silly as the series gets. Bland enemy types and ridiculous, almost mechanical transformations into forgettable monstrosities rounds out some of the primary complaints we have about Resident Evil 6. Until this entry, there has never been a game in the series we didn't want to experience again, even if it were just for the atmosphere. Outside of Leon's time at Ivy University, which was at least serviceable as a survival horror segment, the game felt like it went on forever. We didn't care about anything happening, even if it meant peril for our favourite returning characters. We just wanted it to end. Not a terrible game in its own right, just not a good Resident Evil game. 11. Resident Evil 5 It's not that Resident Evil 5 is a bad game. It just isn't a great Resident Evil game. In fact, it's a pretty bad one. Slap an entirely different set of names and backstory on it, and it could work as a standalone blend of action and survival horror. But by this time, Capcom had overly complicated the series' plot, making it a slog to play through. Chris Redfield and Shiva Alomar were fine protagonists, up until that mind-boggling moment where Redfield punches a boulder. We cared about what happened to them, but near the game's final act, we were kind of done controlling them, especially when playing with the AI character. Resident Evil 5 introduced split-screen co-op into the series with an AI that loved swallowing up bullets and herbs. The only real way to enjoy the title was with a friend, but even then it's not gripping enough to want to sink 20 hours into. Okay, so here's something to argue about. Chris punching a boulder, bad or brilliant? 10. Resident Evil 3 2020 Resident Evil 3 Nemesis always had the feeling that it wasn't meant to be part of the main series, but the 2020 remake amplified that tenfold. We could go on about the five-hour length or how the development team failed to fully utilise Nemesis, but we won't. However, what we will say is that, despite the graphical and mechanical improvements, this is a major downgrade from the original version. Everything about it is so rushed that it somehow feels shorter than the 1999 version. They clock in at about the same length, but the pacing of Nemesis was handled so much better. Additionally, the development team somehow left out the clock tower and graveyard segments. When you set out to remake a game, you don't cut out two of the most iconic moments without replacing them with something even more memorable. Unfortunately, the 2020 remake falls short in many ways that it isn't a necessary playthrough for fans or for newcomers to the series. A seriously missed opportunity, but still fun if you want a few hours of simple zombie shooting. 9. Resident Evil Zero You know what very few people said after playing Resident Evil from 1996? I can't wait for that Rebecca Chambers-led prequel. Yet here we are, with Resident Evil Zero to fill the void that nobody felt. Zero is an okay game, but I think Capcom could have chosen a better protagonist, especially since she just vanishes from the video game series and isn't seen again until the animated movie Vendetta. Why not choose one of the Bravo team's other members? Sure, they all end up dying in the Spencer Mansion, but that would actually add a tragic element to Zero and help it stand out a bit more. Being able to swap between Rebecca and disgraced Force Reconnaissance Officer Billy Cohen was a neat feature, but too much else about Zero lacks the finesse of the remake it released alongside. Zero is an okay game, but ultimately very little about it sticks in the memory, apart from the train. 
Good train, though. Probably top 20 video game trains. 8. Resident Evil Code Veronica It has always struck me as odd that Code Veronica was ripped of its numerical title and labelled more of a spin-off when it feels more like a sequel to the core series than Nemesis. Claire Redfield returns to the series, still on the never-ending hunt for her brother Chris. Her journey brings her to an umbrella facility in Paris, where she finds that the incident in Raccoon City is far from contained. Not much change between Nemesis and Code Veronica. Umbrella's B.O.W.s are as deadly as ever, ranging from flesh-hungry zombies to other horrifying monstrosities. Where Code Veronica differs most is with its variety of locations. Players follow Claire and her new companion, following mate Steve Burnside, across Rockford Island in the Southern Ocean to a secret facility in Antarctica. One of the game's biggest pitfalls is the emergence of the immortal Albert Wesker. His return is arguably one of the worst decisions made in the series, and where things take maybe too sharp a turn into Crazy Town, though the city cheesiness is a part of the franchise's DNA at this point. Hey Capcom, how about you remake this one before 4? 7. Resident Evil 3 2000 Before there was the 2019 version of Mr. X, players were dealing with Nemesis. Jill Valentine returns to take players through the horrors of Raccoon City before and after the events of Resident Evil 2. Many of the mechanics from Resident Evil 2 return, though Jill is equipped with a dodge ability that is a necessary component when combating the very persistent Nemesis. Capable of following players in some segments, Nemesis became the scariest villain in the Resident Evil universe. Even after 20 years, it still remains at the top of that long list of horrifying B.O.W.s. Some elements of Nemesis's plot seemed forced just to give Jill more obstacles, but it's a serviceable sequel with some very cool moments. The Gravedigger fight was fun and highlighted another change to the sequel, multiple ways to kill bosses. Nemesis also featured a few choices for players to make that altered some game elements. 6. Resident Evil 7 Resident Evil 7 introduced a big change in the series and received a ton of flack for it. Admittedly, even I stayed away for a year after its release, fearing it would feel too much like it was feeding on the survival horror trend of helpless protagonists. On the contrary, Resident Evil 7 doesn't lazily mimic games like Outlast and Amnesia. Instead, through new mechanics and much more, it further proves that survival horror is made for first person. Stepping away from the core story while also dropping hints that it's within the same universe as the canonical series, Resident Evil 7 introduces Ethan Winters, a new character searching for his wife. When he arrives at a lone plantation in Dolby, LA, he finds himself at the mercy of the Baker family, a band of deranged killers suffering from a terribly deadly mutation. Again, the Bakers could have been incredibly generic, but Capcom worked its magic to make them quite frightening. Being pursued by the relentless Jack keeps your heart pounding, which is good because the common enemies, the Molded, are pretty bland. When it comes to sound design, Capcom hit it out of the park. Every creak of the house sends shivers down your spine and makes you fear what devilish horrors await around the next corner. Dare you to play this one in VR. 5. Resident Evil 1996 I'd love to say the original Resident Evil was by far the best in the series, but a lot has happened since 1996. It is, however, still among the top five. Some would say the corny dialogue and terrible voice acting works against it, but I think it helps the charm of this PS1 release. Resident Evil may not have been the first survival horror game, but it certainly pioneered the genre. You can't throw a dart at a wall of every survival horror game without hitting one inspired by Capcom's release. Slow pacing, eerie music, and the sprawling mansion come together for a pretty frightening gaming experience that launched the franchise. There's so much about this title that will forever go down in the annals of the genre, particularly the enemy types and the characters. And sure, it may have aged like the zombie ass left out in the sun in some places, but we bet that it can still offer scares if you pass the controller to a first-time player. The original also spawned some of the greatest lines in gaming history. We'll never forget you, Jill Sandwich. Free marketing advice for your Capcom. Team up with Subway to release a limited edition Jill Sandwich. Do it. Do it yesterday. 4. Resident Evil 2 2019 the Resident Evil 2 remake is gorier, scarier, and longer than the original. 
It's a fascinating entry in the series that hits so many high notes, but can't quite creep ahead of the source material. The primary reason? Because Capcom opted to skip out on a true A-B scenario. While you can tackle the campaign as Leon or Claire and then pick it up again as the other character, it's not the same as what was accomplished with the 1998 release. Overlooking that hiccup though, the remake is a fantastic piece of horror. It truly is a terrifying game. The Raccoon City Police Department is coated in viscera and dripping with blood and every sound reeks of impending doom. Capcom toned down the cheesiness a little, which ensures the mood is consistent throughout. The remake also gave us a brand new Mr. X, who, for an entire segment of the game, follows players through the police department. Every inch of the former museum is patrolled by the heavy-footed B.O.W., making it even more critical not to backtrack into the wrong areas. You want him gone as soon as possible, and the only way to do that is to progress. On a side note, Resident Evil 2 2019 has some bloody hilarious mods that give Mr. X a new look if you need to tone down the horror. Or maybe even ramp it up if you're scared of Tom's the Tank Engine. 3. Resident Evil 4 Resident Evil 4 was the first time the series deviated from its tried and true style. Shifting the camera to behind the character completely amplified the immersion and made it possible for returning hero Leon Kennedy to go up against smarter and more agile enemies. Sent to a small village in Spain to find the president's missing daughter, Leon soon finds that zombies were the least of his worries. Infected by a parasite, Las Plagas, the villagers have become a swarm of killing machines. They'll follow Leon into houses, climb ladders, and use whatever means necessary to kill the US government agent. That means a much more tense and heart-rating experience than the series has ever delivered. Resident Evil 4 introduced new mechanics and story elements that would carry over to future titles, for better or worse, but the fourth game arguably represents the best action in the whole series. Also, The Merchant, let's get a spin-off game please, 2. Resident Evil 2 1998 Resident Evil 2 tops the original in every way. Its gameplay is tighter, character models look better, the story has a better flow, the Raccoon City Police Department is more interesting to traverse than Spencer Mansion, and William Birkin is single-handedly the best villain in the Resident Evil series. When rookie cop Leon S. Kennedy and Chris Redfield's sister, Claire, meet up in town, there's little time for small talk. The outbreak has already littered the streets of Raccoon City with bodies, most of them reanimating for a taste of human flesh. Resident Evil 2 builds upon the Umbrella Corporation's story in all the right ways, introducing conspiracies and partnerships with governing bodies. It fleshes out the notion that Umbrella is a much bigger threat than originally perceived, and that things are only going to get worse. I will forever have a soft spot for Resident Evil 2, and will never forget the countless nights I stayed up much later than I should have to play through both A and B scenarios over and over again. And at number 1, Resident Evil Remake The Resident Evil Remake is one of the very few remakes that surpasses the original. Capcom knew exactly what they were doing when they recreated the Spencer Mansion for the GameCube release. From alterations to the gameplay to a complete graphical overhaul, the remake is a remarkable improvement that's longer and scarier than the 1996 release. Resident Evil Remake even expands upon the story to include subplots like the tragic tale of Lisa Trevor. These moments don't just add length to the game, they further show just how vile the Umbrella Corporation is. The mansion is full of returning horrors like Neptune, the zombified shark, and Yawn, the terrifying snake in the attic. The zombies also get an upgrade as the surprisingly faster and stronger Crimson Heads. Not only do you have to put down zombies, you now have to ensure they stay down by setting their corpses on fire, making one of the scariest games of all time somehow even scarier. And there you have it, there is our list of the Resident Evil games ranked. Is Resident Evil Remake the best video game remake of all time? Let's argue about it down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please consider hitting that like button. It's completely free to do so, no expense to yourself, and helps us combat that pesky algorithm. If you want to see more videos like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button as well and hitting that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content in the future as we roll towards 10,000 subscribers on the channel. 
please do also consider checking out all the other social medias and content on screen now, including the Cultured Vultures website, culturedvultures.com, and hopefully, if you've enjoyed this, we'll see you in the next one. But until then, until then, cocoon.